My name is Kerry Decker, and welcome to another edition of the Nightlife Show. But the first part of the program, we're going to be going up to the Parkwood Cinema, and we're going to see how 3D movies are projected onto the screens. I think you're going to enjoy it tonight, right here on the Nightlife Show. We are up in the projection booth of the Parkwood Cinema, as we mentioned, and uh, we're going to get a look at the different types of projection first. So uh, what I would like to do you, to show you at the beginning would be a comparison of standard projection versus, of course, the three-dimensional projection. All righty, why don't you step in here, Wayne, and here he comes. He's going to tell us all about the technical end of it. Why don't you come in here a little bit closer? And I'm going to let you take the microphone and basically explain the type of projector, type of optical system, and everything that we have. And then um, what we can do is uh, go to the 3D projector second. All right, why don't you step right in the picture here, Wayne, and uh, we'll get to work and let's show these fine folks what we have. The, the real capacity here is, is approximately 5,500 feet, which would take you around 57, 58 minutes. The film runs at 90 feet a minute, so it takes a while to go by. Mm -hmm. The film is pulled down by your top sprocket and goes through your picture gate. The picture gate will is the film is pulled through there intermittently. All right, and then we have the loop before we hit the sound head. Is that to kind of smooth out the, uh, the intermittent uh, action? Smooth it out because the sprockets, all the other sprockets are moving constantly at, not, at 360 RPMs, I believe it is. Now I thought it'd be interesting if we could see uh, perhaps some of the differences that's used in the uh, in three-dimensional projection, and uh, maybe we can get some explanation as to uh, the differences and whatnot. I think you might be interested in, in the differences in this. So uh, let's take a quick look now at the three-dimensional projector. Okay, we're walking in now to the other side of the projection booth, which has basically an identical projector. In fact, I guess exactly an identical projector. But uh, this is the one that is set up for a three-dimensional projection. And uh, let me get Wayne in here once again. And um, I don't know how familiar you are with 3D projection or not. I'm hoping you're going to be our expert here on this. But um, uh, the movie which uh, was shown uh, this evening here at the theater was called Coming At You, which is a uh, uh, I guess a 1981 film, it's a new one, that was uh, made in 3D, and it's shown in color, uh, as opposed to uh, earlier black and white type of 3D films where you had to watch it with the red and green glasses. Uh, these, which by the way, I just happen to have a set of them here, are um, a type of Polaroid glasses. They call it a Magnacom lens. You got uh, a lens in here, and then you hit the 3D, which has got a polarizing filter and a prism attachment and you adjust the prisms until you get the one image superimposed on top of the other okay so this was this device was sent along with the cases of film or at least or rendered or whatever comes along with it yes they were rented okay this is something that's not normally in every projectionist booth anywhere no the when this film 3d movie ends with us we ship them back to the California okay uh, what we have here, well, I'll tell you what, let's, um, we're going to take a closer look at this uh, interesting device on the front here and uh, before we go on to uh, this film loop here. So let's, uh, let's take a closer look now at the polarized device which is on the front of the machine. Here we go. Wayne has now removed the lens a brave individual, I must admit, holding this thing here, and uh, perhaps we can get a little closer look at what you've got starting maybe from the far left side there. Well, the back, back end here is our basic flat projection lens. It's a three and a half, three and three quarter inch flat lens. Then you've got the lens barrel coming up here to the uh, polarizing filter area. And then uh, you, on the front, you've got the prisms which you have to align with the film in the, in the projector 
so you can superimpose one picture on top of another. All right, we can uh, pop that back onto the machine, I guess, and uh, we have a film loop, which is um, something which I have never seen and probably most of our viewers haven't uh, also. Uh, this is the film itself, and maybe you can basically tell me, you tell me about the soundtrack and whatnot, if you can briefly tell me that. Well, this test film does not have a soundtrack on it, so, but uh, it, it does have, I don't know if it's, that, well, definable, but between my thumbs, is a frame of film with two separate images and it is marked one for right eye one for left eye and we've superimposed one picture right on top of the other I see you have, there's a series of squares I don't know if you can see that or not maybe you have to put your hand behind it, but there's a series of looks like squares and a crisscross and a few other items on there like a test pattern of some kind similar to a TV test pattern of old but they, they didn't have to superimpose one image on top of another which is what we're doing here with 3D. Okay, alrighty. Why don't you uh, fire up the machine there, and we'll get it going, and we'll watch how he uh, starts things up. Oh, there he goes very nicely. And he opens up there, so the image is on the screen. This film is just running continuously through the machine in a continuous loop. And uh, what we'll do is we'll take a look at this test film and see how he aligns the two images uh, on the screen. This might be kind of interesting. So um, let's take a look at some 3D test film. Here we go. There it is. It's way out of whack right now. The lens is tipped at an angle and everything. He's rotating it. There we go. Now what do we, okay, I see where the, the squares are starting to come together. Okay, now he is twisting the lens in a circular fashion there. Alrighty. This is what, a, like a horizontal adjustment or whatever we're... Okay. And now, uh, what are you getting the... Okay, he's adjusting the framer on the projector. Okay. Now... Now he's adjusting the polarized attachment itself now. I'm going to take it out way out the top and bottom. And the crosshairs going out. Okay, yes. Yeah. See the crosshairs. See how they're right in the center of the picture. are quite a ways apart. And we, what we have to do is bring them back together. In the, uh, the rear of the projection booth now, Wayne, you can come on in here. We're rewinding the movie, and I guess this is coming at you. We're rewinding, isn't it? This is the uh, last th three reels of coming at you. Alrighty, and um, which has, of course, these double images. Is this uh, optical or magnetic sound that's on this film? This is optical. optical. Most of them are printed that way, by the way? Just about everything now is printed on optical sound. Very, very few uh, magnetic film anymore. Yeah. So that should uh, give everyone a, a pretty good look at the world of 3D motion pictures and how it's done under our current standards and, and uh, types of today. And I thought that would uh, give you a good look into the insight of not only 3D movies, but being up in a projection booth, which is something which uh, not very many of us have ever been, I guess. Probably very few people have been up in a projection booth or even know how all this stuff takes place. This was only a very uh, casual view of it, but it's really uh, an exciting exciting thing. Uh, projectionists, I, I hope, are still in demand everywhere and everything. Someone already got to run the projectors. That's right, you got to do it. So we appreciate it anyway. Thank you very much, Wayne. And I want to thank the folks here once again at the Parkwood Theaters for letting us uh, come up and uh, steal a little bit of their time to uh, get a second look at not only regular projection, but 3D projection. So uh, I hope that you enjoyed it. And, of course, we'll keep the cameras on the move. Thank you very much, Wayne, and we'll hope to maybe bump into you again someday soon. Take care. Thank you. Thank you. We'll be right back in just a moment. Mm -hmm.